Hello, and welcome to my channel, Judy's Creations in Crochet. Today is November the 17th, 2022, and I am so happy you stopped by to check out my video. I hope you enjoy what you see. If you are new to the channel, please check the subscribe button and come back for more yarny goodness here. And I also appreciate all the thumbs ups and the comments. I do respond to every comment. For those that are checking me out for the first time, I am coming to you from southwestern Ontario in Canada, only an hour from the U.S. border. And what we do here is we talk about, obviously, crochet. So I show lots of finished objects and works in progress, and we also talk about yarn. Now, I tend to focus on hand-dyed yarn because I am aware that there are, there are hundreds, I mean hundreds, of crochet channels out there. And most of them will talk about the yarns you can buy in the big box stores, even online big box stores. Um, and since there are so many of them, and I don't have easy access to many big box stores, all we have is Michael's, I have uh, gotten interested in hand-dyed yarns, and now I tend to focus on hand-dyed yarns. So I like to share that information with you. Um, I also want to mention that um, I'm just here because I love crochet and I want to share my crochet with others. I had um, been planning to go in a fall craft show and of course with COVID it was cancelled for two years running and then when I thought it would come back this year it was totally just canceled. The The group that um, hosted the craft show decided not to do it anymore. So I had been stockpiling for like three years, didn't know what to do with it, and I am slowly selling some of it in the marketplace. But mostly I just thought here was an opportunity to share my finished objects with you. So you're going to see lots of finished objects that come from my stash as well as what I am making over time. And that's my only reason for being here, was to share what I had made and to make some friends in the crochet or yarn community. I'm not here to, um, to, to it's not a job for me, I'm retired, so, I've worked long enough. <laughs> I'm here to enjoy what I'm doing and share what I enjoy doing with you. And I hope you enjoy it and join along in my journey because I'm still learning. And as I learn things or discover new things, I like to share with you. So I hope you enjoy what you see. Now, before I start, start, sorry, before I start sharing some finished objects, I also wanted to bring two other things, well, three other things to your attention. All of my contact information is in the description box below. And as you know, I always put links to the things I, I talk about. But a new thing I have added to my standard links is a link to a Ravelry page. I'm not sure how much you know uh, about Ravelry. I'm still learning. I learned something new just in uh, the last couple of weeks. And one of the things is I have been doing for a little while is making what they call project pages. And you can set up a project pa page of anything you're making. So it's a way to keep a file of what you're doing. But you can particularly set up a project page for a pattern that you obtain, purchase on Ravelry. And it's a link there so that the designer can see the um, items that people are making. But you also can see 
my project pages because I gave you a link that takes you right to my main page that has thumbnails uh, of all of my projects that I have made a page for. And you can press it and it'll open up and it'll tell you the name of the um, pattern. It'll tell you the yarn I use, the hook size I use. It'll show you pictures. Usually I try to take a picture of the yarn before I use it and then the finished object. So if you see something I'm showing in one of my videos that you're particularly interested in knowing more about, you didn't catch all the information here, you can go on that page and have a look. Or if you just feel like browsing through what I've done, you can go there and have a look. That's one thing I wanted you to know. Now, I will not be putting all these shawls I talk about that I'm giving away for donation. That would be just too time consuming. My main focus is to link the patterns that I have purchased on Ravelry and to do all the things that I make with my hand eye yarn because I know that is something different and I think it is something you might find interesting to look at. Another thing I want to remind you of down below, because I don't think you always remember, is I have a special code that you can use when you shop at Little Bicious Stitches. Now she is a hand dyer who lives in Germany and she gave me a code for my viewers for 15% off. So if you decide to buy something from her, try her out, please remember there is a code to give you a discount. I had one of my viewers tell me just this past week that they bought her advent calendar box. I sure hope you used my code or Reggie's code to uh, purchase that. Now, the other thing I want to remind you of is that very soon the winter yarny YouTube hop will be occurring. Only a little over a month to go and we'll be in winter and before you know it, Christmas. So I have selected the yarn that I am going to use to make an item for the um, Winter Yarny YouTube Hop. I will likely be releasing a very short video in a week or 10 days, um, a week within the next week, showing you the yarn that I'm going to use, giving you a sneak peek. Haven't decided on the pattern yet. I have two in mind and I'll decide soon. But what I also like to do on my Winter Yarny YouTube Hop, for those of you that have seen it before, I like to feature some of your items. So if you're making winter things now, leg warmers, scarves, hats, mittens, sweaters, whatever winter item, even I would think a holiday decoration, whatever item you think is wintry, then I would love for you to send me a picture so I can post those on that special video. I do a video separate from my weekly videos um, on the first day of winter, which is December 21st. And I happen to know that it is on a Wednesday. So it'll be coming out Wednesday and then I do my normal video on a Thursday. So please keep in mind, um, I need those about a week in advance. So by the middle of December, I would love to have pictures from you, your winter items, so I can show them off for you. Okay, let's get started on our regular items. I always start with what I am wearing and what Faith and Hope are wearing. So what I am wearing is a sweater that I have shown you several times before. So I'm not going to go into a lot of details. I will try to remember to put a link below. It was a free pattern from Hobie, Hobby, however you want to say it. I'll put a link to it. It's a all one piece. It starts at the bottom, works up, chains an opening, and works down. And I have made some alterations to it. And the yarn that I used for it is um, Expression Fiber Arts. You'll hear me talk about them a lot, EFA. Uh, Expression Fiber Arts 
uh, sparkling DK yarn in the colorway Blizzard. One of my favorite colorways. So this is nothing new to my regular subscribers, but some of you I know are new because we have added about 140 new subscribers in, oh, the last maybe three weeks or so. So let's move on. I'm going to start with what, what Hope is wearing. I'll bring this in. Now, you'll recall I showed you this last week. Uh, we can't I'll move a bit. I showed you this last week because I was working on it. Here it is finished. There's the, you can barely see the top. I'll move it down just a bit. Just when you're trying to do something, it won't, oh, there we go. Okay, there's the top. And I'm gonna talk about how I color controlled this and it works up. Quite lengthy. I'm trying to make all of these a good size because for those that have been following me, you know that a friend and I are working diligently on shawls until Christmas because we um, have a, I think it's a senior's residence a few blocks away from me that was really happy to receive a few shawls and we decided we would try to make enough for everybody. We won't have them all done by Christmas. This is the modern, modern day or modern granny shawl. And it's a pattern by Fiber Spider. And as always, I will link it in the uh, description box below. Now, it is a pattern that is a bit of a yarn eater, only because these, st uh, bring her in, because these stacked granny, granny clusters cover a row of chains. So you do your granny clusters and then you do a row of chains and then you use those chains to put the next row of granny clusters. So it does cover up some of your work and that's, that's why I say it's a little bit of a yarn eater. Now, I used a Mandela bonus bundle. Mandela bonus bundle. I have never used a, I've used Mandela many times, but never had a bonus bundle. And I bought this just to fill up in order to get free shipping. And this is the colorway. I'm sure you're all very familiar with Mandela's. They are 100% acrylic. And this particular bonus bundle, it has 1181 yards or 1,080 meters. Now, when I got it, it came, uh, it didn't come quite in that order. As you can see, the orange is in the middle and my orange was farther out. It started with the pink, which was fine. I would like to start with pink, but it ended on the outside edge with the purple that you see here. The orange and yellow, or maybe it's a limey green, were sort of in the middle. And that purple that was on the outside, because there was only a little bit I could see through to the blue, I knew that if it was at the end of the shawl, which you know is a long way around, we might get half or three quarters of a round in purple. And as you know, purple is one of my favorite colors. And the other thing I knew was I would not need this entire cake to make this shawl and then I would never get to the blue and purple so I did this I started at the outside edge to get that purple and the blue it's kind of a tealy color and a bit of green then I stopped and I went to the center and started working out the pinks into the orange so here is what is left of the cake quite a bit and it was um yeah I stopped at that shade 
and I didn't go to this shade of green, and I didn't use this color, which is a yellowy green, because I, I knew I didn't want this, and I didn't really care if I had orange or not, but I thought, oh, I'll go until it's a decent length. So I did end up using some orange. Now, I'll, I'll cake this up or put it into a ball to put it away, but I wanted you to see the cake and get an idea of how much is left. I'm sure most of these shawls are taking between seven and 800 yards. Um, so I knew this was way too much. So that's, you saw that last week, I was just getting ready to finish the orange. I had it all the way up to the pink. So that night I finished this shawl. So that's one finished object. Then, I'm going to get this out of the way. I have a lot of stuff here on the table. The next thing I decided to work on, um, I believe, was I was talking about these squares I was making. These are squares that um, there's a pattern for on EFA because they released a free pattern um, for... A granny, a granny square blanket. Well, I don't want to make a blanket, as I told you last week. I, um, I'm making these squares for something to do to fill in when I kind of get tired of the main project I'm working on. Um, uh, or I only have a few minutes to sit down and work before I have to do something else. And I'm going to make probably a cocoon cardigan out of it, but that's still not definite. So when I saw you last week, I had done three squares. This, these squares are made by marling two colors. And I was working with these three colors at that point. These are the three colors I had started with. And I had two of this one, which uses these two colors. And I had one of this color, which uses these two colors. So I went on to do a second one because I'm doing two of every color combination and then I'll figure out how many I need. So I did one more making four and then I put these two colors together and I made two more. So I made three more squares this week. So I now have a big grand total of six squares. Um, I am using... Expression Fiber Arts Blossom Fingering. I have six colors. I'll show you the other three in just a second. Uh, because I didn't know what to do with it. And I thought, well, this was a perfect way. It makes it a little heavier than fingering by combining the two. And it is very nice feeling. It's, it's soft. Um, so I've used these three colors. And I'm using my Furls number five. I love this hook. And I am going to add in three more colors. I may have to add in one or two more. I do have more colors, but I am going to add in these three colors. So the next thing I'm going to do is take this one and combine it. This is how I'm keeping track. I'm adding one and combining it with each of these colors. I think it'll look really pretty with them. So that was another day's work doing these three granny squares. So I now have six. As I said, this is definitely a work in progress because I have no goal to finish it by a certain time. I'll be very happy if I finish it in three or four or five, even six months. I'd like to finish it in the spring sometime. Doesn't matter when though, It's there's no goal. It's just for me. It will be a cocoon cardigan for hopefully for the spring and summer. So that's another thing I finished. <coughs> three, well, I didn't finish the project, but I finished three more granny squares. I need a drink. Excuse me. Now, the next thing I finished, this was another day's work. If you remember... 
uh, I don't think it was last week, I think it was two weeks ago, I showed you I was out shopping and happened to come across these two small little Thai beanie babies. And one was a snow lady, I say she's a lady, a snow lady, and the other was a, uh, a reindeer, looking very Christmassy. So I had enough time, and I had already the ball of red sparkly yarn that I also came across that same day. If uh, you want to look back a couple videos, you'll see where I talk about my surprise shopping spree. So this week, I made a skirt for the snow lady. And I think you can see that that red, and it was Red Heart, Super Saver, had sparkles in it. I used my own pattern for this. I know a lot of people use the Granny Square uh, blanket idea from um, NRJ3Z, Zelda's pattern. But... Um, I do a circular one a lot. Now, the ones I have for sale, I use that pattern from Zelda. But um, I've been starting to make them circular. At least I have for Kiki's dresses and for this one. Isn't that pretty? So she's all ready. I was quite happy. And this, by the way, the white is uh, Karen Latte Cake. I love Latte Cake. And when they had more white, I bought up. Uh, a couple more. So I probably have three cakes and a bit of white latte to use for all kinds of things. So I really enjoyed making that. Great. And I still have one more finished object. I don't have table space for all of this. <clears throat> and that is another shawl. And this is Hope. Hope is wearing this shawl. And I'll turn it around so you can see the back. It's all one color. And this is a pattern I made um, a few weeks ago. I think the one that was green was done in this same pattern. This is a variation of the Granny Merge pattern. Now, the Granny Merge pattern is a fiber spider, and he does talk about altering it, but he doesn't. There is somebody else, I think it's called Blossom. I will link it below. See how you have open traditional Granny here and solid on the other side, and then they each switch solid, open traditional, rather than all traditional all solid. I really do enjoy doing that pattern. It's pretty similar to the regular one. And then when I got near the end, I did a bigger, bigger sections. So this is the shawl. Good size. And it was made with the Karen Crystal Cake. Now I'm sure some of you are familiar with it. I had bought crystal cake in about two or three different colors back when they came out which would be I think a year almost a year and a half ago they came out in the summer the summer of I think 2021 and it was hard to get them here in Canada but I did finally get a few and I never used them they are um I used the whole thing. I don't know that I had any left over other than a little piece. They are um, quite thick with a, a sparkle in the middle, a sparkle thread going through the middle of it. It is, let me tell you about it. It's a number four weight, and the cake has, I think it's 600 and something. Where is it? Yes. 634 yards, which is 580 meters, and um, they suggest a number five millimeter hook. I think I might have used a five and a half. They say this is machine washable and dryable. I tend not to wash and dry any handmade things. Um, oh, and the color of this is amaranth. Oh, that might be the other language, amaranto. 
I don't know. They tell it to you three times in three languages. And I don't recognize any of them. Anyhow, that was the yarn I used. And so I finished another shawl. Both of these shawls will go in our uh, donation box that we will be taking to them in, in December. So that was a lot of finished objects but I'm not done yet. I saved to the end. It's not finished, as you know, but I finished this week's version or this week's um, section. And that is our shawl game. So those that are new, um, I purchased this kit that has a crocheted shawl. You can, by the way, you can get this kit with a, um, a knitted pattern as well. Um, it's on Etsy, so I will link it on Etsy. And I also have a link right to the pattern if you only want the pattern. But the whole idea is you get this pattern and you choose the groups of yarns that you want. And I actually chose the colors that are showing in this picture. And so you have six balls of yarn. And there are six different patterns on here. And every week together, you, you wouldn't have to do it every week at home. But every week I am rolling the dice and coming up with the number for the yarn and the number for the pattern. Now, just to show you, they do send the, um, they are mini skeins. I'm not sure if I remember how many, I think they're, uh, this might tell me. Yes, they're 50 grams. So they're half of a regular size yarn. And that's the, um, the company I'm, I'm dealing with on Etsy. And they send you labels to put on every ball of yarn. So they're numbered. I hope we get five this week because I haven't used this yarn at all. And if you look at this yarn, this yarn isn't gonna go much farther. We're gonna run out of it soon. <clears throat> so anyway, <coughs> we roll the dice and we, we find out what the next section will be. And I think I've heard people say they've played with this idea themselves. They just have a pattern and it has sections in it. And they use Surrey to say, pick a number between. I've watched um, Tony, Tony Lipsy, do that for, she made a sweater this fall. And she's done it before. I think it was a cowl, but I'm not sure, maybe scarf. And she just says, pick a number. Surrey picks a number and she uses the... Um, mini skein she has for the next color in the item she's making. So that's the basis of this for those that haven't been here before or have missed the last few weeks. So up to this point, these were the last two last week. We picked this color and this color, and they both were number one in the pattern, which was the basic pattern, which is basically a moss stitch, a moss stitch with the right increases and decreases to keep it going because this is going to make, as you could see, an asymmetrical triangle. So it's getting to be a good size. I hope we start using the yarns we haven't used much of. We've only used this one once, and this one, although twice, a very small. So we could do that again. And that one we haven't used at all, which is similar to the gray, but instead of the um, teal colors, you don't see much, but there's a little bit of teal in it. The other gray has some of this wine or burgundy color in it. So anyway, every week we're rolling the dice and I did it in sections of three. And then last week I did two sections. And unfortunately I made a mistake and realized after I finished the first one that I didn't do as many rows as I was supposed to. So I did the same thing in the next one. As we're getting wider, it's not a problem that these are narrower. 
So, it's time to roll our dice. Again, for those that haven't been here before, we are using a three and a half E um, hook, again, a furls. And they have given us two dice. The blue stands for the color and the green stands for the pattern number. Now I have to find, and anybody that would like to catch up, the numbers, I have written them all down from the past. Now, this week, I came better prepared, and I have a bigger surface. It's still not huge, but it's bigger than my iPad. So, first roll, and we get in the color number one. Oops. Number one. What's number one? I have a feeling it's one that's really low. Yeah, number one. Oh, I decided I'm not going to do the same color in a row. And it came up this color. and I, It wouldn't look any different to put the same color. So I'm not going to do it twice in a row. So I'm going to make an arbitrary decision. Please forgive me, but we just did that color twice. And we have not used this color at all. And I'm going to make sure we use this color. So that's what I'm going to put in there. Which is... Uh, where's my pen? Color number five. I have a pen here. Sorry, but I'm making that decision this time. So color number five. And sorry... The pattern is pattern, whoa, is pattern number three. Pattern number three. Um, I think pattern number three is the one with the spikes that I couldn't get to work properly. Remember, it was growing way too much. I'll go back and look at it again and see if, I can find where I was misinterpreting it, and I will try pattern number three again. But if if I can't figure out where my mistake is, I'll uh, maybe just do the base row. Okay. Sorry, we're doing a lot of fudging this week. <laughs> All righty. Let's get anything but number one up here, because number one is almost up. Okay, we have two and two. Two and two. So color number two. I know pattern number two is this one. That's a nice pattern. And color number two. Ah, oh, no. Okay, here's here's color number two. Well, we just left color number two, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. So we're going to add this, and then we're going to add this, which will be a good, good, uh, yeah, that'll look nice. So that's what I have to have done for next week is the next two sections, because as you can see, they're getting um, much wider. And um, at this point, getting wide like they are, um, it's using the yarn up much faster. So we're going to see that I'll finish, I'll, pretty, I'll come pretty close to finishing up what is available with this color. Yeah, we'll, we'll soon be running out. Be nice if we got another gray and then this color with it. We'll see. But anyway, that's what I have to do for next week. So, I'll put that aside. And I'll put my dice back in, along with the hook, back in the bag they gave us. And I'll put everything over here. And that's going to be my job for tomorrow. Now, time is running on again. So I'm not actually going to show much 
I'm really not going to show anything in acquisitions. I wanted to talk about one thing, uh, an acquisition I made, but it's only like one skein, one color. And um, that is this. You know I talk about getting hand-dyed yarn from Canadian dyers. And you know, I'm sure you've heard me say that my favorite, well, I think other than Expression Fiber Arts, she's my favorite hand dyer. She doesn't have a huge selection, but what she has is nice, good quality, reasonably priced, free shipping. How can you beat that? So she, uh, about two, three weeks, it must have been at least three weeks ago, maybe even four, she had some of her new colors on. You get a newsletter every Friday. And she showed her new colors, which were getting ready for Christmas. And she had one that was called Candy Cane. Now, I liked the color. It was pretty. But I looked at it and I thought, oh, I can just see sparkles in that. And this just shows you why I appreciate this company. It's a husband and wife who have a farm. Um, they've moved from New Brunswick to, no, I think they're in Nova Scotia now. Or is it the other way around? They moved from Nova Scotia to New Brunswick. That's probably what it was. And um, they have sheep. Uh, do they have a llama? I think so. But anyway, they they shear the sheep and sell it and so on. And they use very good quality yarn. And I've always found her very, very helpful and open to suggestion when I talk to her. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to ask. So I right away wrote back and I said, I really like your Christmas colors. But you know, that candy cane to me would be perfect on a sparkle base. Any chance that we could get that on a sparkle base? She wrote back right away the same day and said, I have some sparkle base in stock. If you'd like some, I'll dye some. I'll put it on the dye list for next week. So I wrote back and said, oh, sure. I would like two skeins of it. So she dyed up 10. That must be the um, numbers that they do. She dyed up 10 of it. And the following week, she said, okay, I have it. Are you still interested? I said, sure, fine. So she sent me the invoice for two and sent it. And she's one of the ones that sends it flat, vacuum sealed. And that's why I can get it free shipping. And here it is. Lots of different reds, burgundy, lighter almost to pink and shades of green. And I think you can see the sparkle there, especially in the burgundy part. And it's always just heavenly soft. And you're gonna see something made up in at least one, if not two skeins. I think I'm gonna do a single skein for right now <coughs> because I have an idea of something else I'd like to make as well. So you're gonna see something made up in this before Christmas, because I, I think it's really, really beautiful. And I really appreciated her doing that. <clears throat> now, I was going to show you some other finished objects from my stash, but um, time is getting away from us. And I think I'm just going to leave leave what I have to show you for next week because you did see a lot of finished objects this week and um, I am going to get busy on another shawl probably tomorrow. I am working on something. You can call it a whip but to me it's my current project and it will be done tonight. I'm working on something I'll finish tonight and then I'll start another shawl um, for next week. So here's what I am working on. Um, if you remember I showed you, and I'm going to put the pattern here. Here's a picture of the pattern I wanted to make. And I wanted to make it with, it's way back here, so just give me a second. I wanted to make it with a, um, I don't know, we're all tangled up here. Oh, 
Here's what I wanted to show you. I wanted to make it with this tweed. And I purposely ordered this tweed to make that pattern I just showed you. And I really like the yarn. I like the color. But what I didn't realize, because I didn't look closely enough, is although they call it a fingering weight, it's awful thin. Like way thinner than I would call a fingering weight. And um, I went to me, I started that pattern and I got a little ways into it. And I said, this, this isn't working for me. First of all, it was too thin. And second of all, can you see the twist in that yarn? It had a lot of texture, more texture from the twist, not the tweed, from the twist than I, I actually liked. And I said, I'm not going to enjoy making this. So I decided to see if I could find something I could put this with to make it a little heavier, to give it a little more body and not feel that real fine twist. I wasn't enjoying it at all. So, I mean, I only had a little bit like this and it, it's, you know, starts tiny and grows. So I went looking through my stash for several other things. I did find one thing that it would go with that I might try, but I settled on yarn that I got from EFA a while back and it was supposed to be, it's called Abyss. It was supposed to be black, but I had I think I bought this as an oopsie because I do have the black <clears throat> that I bought later and this does not look. Can you see that it has a brown look to it? Does it look brown there in the picture? And this is a, it's an EFA yarn and it's alpaca silk DK. So I thought, okay, this will add a little bit of body to it. And I put them together, and honestly, together, they still feel like a good, solid DK. Um, let's see if I can show it to you. So there they are together. And it's not as heavy as a four weight. So I think alpaca silk is a light, DK and adding this made it a little heavier DK, but there isn't much to that tweed. So I started making it and I was really happy with how it was looking. I'll show you the beginning of it. So it does have a brown look to it and it still has that sort of tweedy look just because there are pops of color. You can see every cat hair in it. And I was quite happy with it. It's a very, very easy pattern. But last night when I was working on it, I came to the decision that I had two balls of this because they only have, I don't know, 230 yards in them. And I had two balls of this, but was only going to use one that has, well, I could use more, but I did not have more of this. And I saw that the pattern was going to use something like 469 yards and I wasn't going to have enough. Plus, this seemed awful big. It was because of the heavier weight, it was growing more than the pattern that I showed you would be. And that's because I used a heavier weight yarn. So I decided rather than, because that pattern starts, it increases, and then it decreases back to a point. So when you're all done, you've got a very long and not very deep triangle. This was not going to be what it should be. It was too heavy for that pattern. It should be more delicate. I will remake the pattern with a, a, a fingering weight that is a nice solid fingering weight, even something like this. This is thicker than the one I showed, see? how much thicker this fingering weight is than this really thin. There's a real difference in them. 
So I'll find something that's fingering or maybe sport weight to make the pattern again. But I decided since I was halfway through, and I did like it, but it was heavier and bigger than it was supposed to be. I decided I'm just going to keep on with the increases, forget decreases, and I'm going to make it into a big asymmetrical triangle. So I'm not going to show you the whole thing. You've seen the beginning. You've heard the trials I had with it. This is my work in progress. And I really hope, given that I'm near the end of this, that I can finish it tonight. And then I can get on to another shawl. But I needed a break from the shawls. And so I decided to do this for a break. And then tomorrow I'll start my next shawl. So that brings us to the end of this week's version. <laughs> um, a lot got done this past week. I'm not sure how much more we'll get done next week. I know I'm going to finish this. And I know I will finish... Um, our make a long game shawl. Um, what else I'll get done? I'm not sure. So hopefully the items I wanted to show you, I'll get to show you next week. And I hope you'll come back to see the items I do have to show you. And hopefully next week I can show you, um, an acquisition because I do have several acquisitions and I'm going to talk about that too. I'm going to change what I do, but I'll talk about that next week. So hope you'll join me again next week in my crochet journey. And until then, happy hooking.